Hey, so the SBA, the Small Business Administration, recently made some changes to their SOP, their standard operating procedures that will go into effect later this year in 2023. And I wanted to talk through a few of these changes that I think are going to have a, a pretty significant impact on business acquisitions specifically. And so I want to talk about three points there and kind of talk through maybe what some of the implications might be with that. So let's go ahead and dive into the details. Okay, so there are three key changes that I want to highlight. You can now use an SBA loan to acquire a partial ownership of a business. In the past, if you were going to use an SBA loan to acquire a business, you had to acquire the entire business. You had to be the new 100% owner, and you couldn't acquire just a portion of the business. So this also has kind of the reverse effect as well. So you can now sell a portion of your business. If you own a business and you want to stay involved, maybe one of your business partners needs to get out and you want to help bring in a new business partner, you could sell a portion of your business to a buyer who's using an SBA loan now. Also, you can use a seller note with a 24-month full standby requirement. And we'll get into the differences between what the requirements were before compared to what they are now. But basically, the short of it is, is that this is loosening some of the restrictions and should make it easier for business acquisition deals to get done. Okay, so the first big change we want to look at is we can use an SBA loan to acquire a partial ownership of a business. And so now you can see the highlighted section here of the SBA's document that they released. I took a screenshot and kind of highlighted the key portions here. But you can use loan proceeds to fund the purchase of a portion of one or more owner's interest in the business. Now, the next point here is important because it says that both the business and the individual owners who are acquiring the ownership interest must be co-borrowers on the new loan. So if you had an example where you had two business owners each own 50% and you're wanting to come in and buy out one of those partners. The remaining partner that's going to stay with you and be the other 50% owner is actually going to have to co-sign and, and personally guarantee your loan that you're using to buy out the other partner. So I don't know how often realistically that's going to happen. I don't know if there's a whole lot of incentive for that remaining partner to be willing to personally guarantee the loan that you're using to buy your ownership piece. I'm not sure how often that will happen, but I think more likely the scenario will be where essentially the new owner is buying out control of the business, kind of buying the entire business, but doesn't have to buy all 100%. And if we look at this next point, it says the percentages of ownership for this requirement will be based on the post-sale percentages of ownership in the business. So this is talking about requirements for personal guarantees. And this relates to owners that are own 20% or more of the business are going to be required to personally guarantee. So I think what might often happen is that instead of buying 100% of the business, you might buy 81% of the business. And a prior owner will stay on and own the remaining 19 But because they own less than 20%, they don't have to personally guarantee the loan that you used to acquire the business. So I think what that will allow to happen is, you know, the seller will get to continue to stay involved, maybe benefit from the growth of the business. From the buyer's perspective, it keeps the seller involved and gives them some reason to stick around and make sure the transition goes well because they're still a part owner. So I think those are kind of the key takeaways from this point. You know, the kind of the reverse here, we can sell a portion of your business to a buyer using an SBA loan. I think if you are looking to sell your business and you have a certain price point in mind of what you want to get and you're having trouble finding a buyer willing to pay that price, this gives some opportunity to maybe have a bit more flexibility. You could say, okay, I'll sell you 81% of the business, but final 19, maybe that's based on me sticking around, helping with the transition, hitting some certain growth targets, certain goals. And then maybe you have the opportunity to buy out the rest of that ownership and get your full asking price in the future. So I think that may be how this is used from a seller's perspective. The other thing that I want to highlight here is that you can use a seller note with 24 month full standby requirement. So first of all, what a seller note is, let's say you want to sell your business for a million dollars. And in the past, the way that might have worked is you borrow 900000 from the SBA. The new buyer would put in 5% or 50000 in cash. And then the seller might keep a seller note for the final 5%. And so essentially what that means is the seller is financing that last 5% and saying, okay, you'll go ahead and pay me 950000 today. 
and then you'll pay me the last 50000 over time in the future. And in the past, what the SBA said is that the seller note needed to be on full standby until the SBA loan was paid off in full. So if you get a 10-year SBA loan and it takes you 10 years to pay off that first 900000 the seller note that the seller is not going to get that last 50000 for a decade in that scenario, right? They're not even going to get going to be able to get paid on that for a decade. And so obviously that's probably not ideal for sellers. They'd probably rather get paid sooner. And so what this new change will allow is it's going to allow the the buyer to start paying the seller's note portion after 24 months. So after you've sold the business and let's say you've got that last 50,000 to pay on for the seller's note that can actually start being paid on after 24 months from the date of acquisition. Um, so again, I think this is friendly to the seller and maybe friendly to the buyer in the sense that it will help them get a deal done that may not otherwise get done. So those are the big changes. Just a little bit about what we do here at Projection Hub. So we help our clients create financial projections. This is just a screenshot of one of our financial models. And a lot of our clients are looking to acquire businesses and need to create a financial model for that for that SBA loan, perhaps. And so just as a thank you for sticking around to the end of the video, we are going to give you a discount code to our acquisition financial projection template. So if you're thinking about buying a business and need to model out what that would look like, you can go to the description of the video below and we'll have a link to the template that you can grab as well as there'll be a form down there where you can put in some information. We'll email you our most up-to-date coupon code so you can get a discount at checkout on that template. So we thank you for sticking around. If you have questions about these new SBA rules, we'd be happy to try to answer them the best we can. And so we'd be happy to hear from you at support at projectionhub.com. Thanks.